uh, my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, my friend, our friend, and our mayor, uh, Marty Walsh. Thank you for all, all the great work that you do for the Boston Housing Authority, and uh, it's an honor to be here today. Uh, I want to just give a shout out to a few elected officials that are here. Uh, Representative Nick Collins, Senator Mike Rush, uh, Mayor Ray Flynn and his wife Kathy are here, Billy Council, uh, City Council Billy Lenahan, uh, State Senator Linda Vecina Fori, uh, City Council Nisa Sabi George. Uh, I don't know if I missed anybody. Uh, but I'm sure I'll get you. And I'm not going to start mentioning past politicians because we'll be here for three days. Um, <laughs> or anyone that works for the city or state or the federal government. Because <laughs> uh, right now, the sick time, thank God we have sick time. Um, Sen Senator Maki, thank you for being here with us today. Congressman Capuano, thank you for being with us today. Uh, to Linda, Karen, Steve, and Sheila, Nancy, and Donna, thank you. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here. Um, the family and friends of Ann Lynch. Uh, Ann is, was a wonderful person. Uh, I thank God I can say I knew her personally. Uh, I have many uh, stories of Ann Lynch um, during different times, different campaigns. Um, and I'm honored to say that, you know, her baby Stephen was on the fridge for many years. <laughs> <laughs> and um, over the last few years, I happened to nudge Stephen out a little bit on the fridge. <laughs> I was pretty happy there that I was able to, you know, move my But, but as Billy said, uh, Billy talked uh, talking about all, all of the people who came out of uh, different housing developments, Old Colony being one of them, uh, and went on to do great things in their life for their family. And you think about this community. Old Colony housing is one of the oldest and largest in the Boston Public Housing Authority um, system. We have 472 units right here on the waterfront. Um, you know, over the years, many working families have lived here, and as, as we talk about it today, many working families still live here. Um, Billy has done an incredible job in, in the Boston Housing Authority as far as renovating and upgrading Old Colony for the future. Um, it's an honor to dedicate this development uh, in the memory of Ann Lynch. Um, Ann uh, epitomized Boston spirit. She was hardworking, uh, loved and was dedicated to her family a proud union member of the American Postal Workers Union. She proudly, with her husband, raised their family here. Um, and that, that is something that it's important for us not to forget about developments. It's important for us to understand the importance of, of moving forward and advocating. She was an, a great advocate for Old Colony but also for public housing. Um, I'm sure that there's many conversations that she had with Stephen when he got elected to the United States Congress and talking to him about the ability to be able to bring back to the neighborhood because so many families have gone through the doors that were here and walked in this ground and gone on to do great things. And, and for somebody who, who lived here and was able to have a son become a United States Congressman and understand the importance of being able to give back to the community, uh, she, she, she understood that. She never let her family or her son forget their roots. And that's something that, that I know firsthand. She was a champion for Boston families. Uh, it's such an honor. Um, I was able to, if you read the paper this morning, um, we sold Winter Square Garage. Um, in, or in the process of selling Winter Square Garage, it's one of the best uh, deals in the history of Boston, $153 million. Um, and we're gonna get, uh, on, once the sale is finalized, we're gonna get $102 million up front. And then when, when the sale is, when the building is built and complete, we're going to get another $50 million into the city of Boston. And we started to think about what could we do with the money. Uh, and that Winter Square garage, at one point, the revenue from that garage went to the Boston Housing Authority. And when we had to close and condemn that garage, the Boston Housing Authority lost that ability. At the same time, the Boston Housing Authority is working on, on two, two developments in the city of Boston right now, one over in East Boston, Orient Heights, and one is how do we finish Old Colony? Um, actually, we're going to change how we finish Ian Lynch's buildings. Um, and we are going to make a $25 million contribution towards that. <laughs> the sale of Winter Square. And we're also spreading this investment uh, as Ian would have wanted. 
um, into other areas, into other housing developments, into open space and parks, into Boston Common, into Franklin Park, into finally closing the Emerald Necklace. So there's many things we can do. Um, this development is a big part of South Boston and it's a big part of our city. Uh, as we continue to renovate and expand it, uh, I know that um, a lot of people are here today, but when you walk out, um, those of you that grew up here, um, maybe some of you just come back for the first time in a while, um, the faces in these buildings might be different, but the families are the same. The same challenges that people had, the same, same struggles that people had, but also the same happiness that people had. The same memories that you see up here that the Lynch family put on the, put on the wall of many of the pictures that were taken here, uh, right outside on the streets here. Th those memories are gonna be, gonna be lasting for a lot of families. So I'm honored to be part of today. I wanna thank the Lynch family for allowing us to do this. Uh, I know that um, Ann Lynch is looking down on us today and she is smiling um, for, and she's also gonna put a lot of pressure on us to make sure that we keep, keep this place up to speed. So <laughs> we gotta watch out. But we, we, I just wanna thank you all for being here today. There's so much more I could say, but to all, all the family and friends that are here today of Ann Lynch or South Boston, um, this is, this is, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for honoring us all with your presence and we God bless you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I can assure you we'll put that 25 million to good use and, uh, we'll get rolling on the phase, the next phase of redevelopment here of, uh, Ann M. Lynch homes. So thank you. That's very generous. Our uh, next speaker, we're honored to have uh, one of our Massachusetts uh, senators here uh, to help us celebrate uh, the renaming of Old Colony to Am Lynch Apartments. Please a warm welcome for Senator Ed Markey. Thank you so much and thank all of you for being here uh, today. This is a big day in the history of South Boston, uh, because uh, the Lynch family represents and embodies all of the values of South Boston. And what Ann did was raise the quintessential South Boston family. When Joe Moakley passed away and Steve won the congressional seat from South Boston, John McCormick, Joe Moakley, now Steve Lynch, as the new dean of the Massachusetts delegation, uh, I introduced him on the floor of the house for the first time with this incredible South Boston galler, gathering up in the, <laughs> up in the, the, the spectator gallery of the House of Representatives. And I said that there are so many people here to the gallery and to the uh, members of Congress. There are so many people here and their enthusiasm is so great because in South Boston, being elected congressman from South Boston is bigger than being elected president of the United States of America. <laughs> and that is why that level of enthusiasm was so great that day. And, uh, uh, and just even in the, the renaming of this, um, from the old colony housing development to the Ann M. Lynch homes, homes at Old Colony. That captures what it has always been, the home to so many families in terms of what their hopes and dreams were, what their aspirations were for their families. And for many, the accents may be different in the modern era, but the Aspirations are going to be the same for what they represented for the Lynch family. And so it is my great honor to be here with uh, Steve and Margaret today and the entire family uh, because this is a huge, huge moment because it represents the reinvestment into the community. And the mayor, uh, the mayor uh, spoke about this longer term investment, uh, that, uh, that almost a renaming uh, represents for a future generation. But uh, I wanted to be here uh, because I'm here uh, uh, representing Massachusetts because of my mother and father. And I know that Steve feels the same way. Uh, so doesn't um, Michael, so doesn't the mayor. 
we all know that all we are are the derivative beneficiaries of an incredible investment made in me and in each of the others who are rep uh, are here. And Anne is the um, kind of the pluperfect form of this species that dedicates their lives to their children uh, so that they can maximize their God-given abilities. And so I wanted to be here uh, with the Lynch family, but with the South Boston family, uh, so that we can celebrate this incredible moment that uh, is so richly deserved. And I just wanted to thank uh, and congratulate the Lynch family for everything that they have done for South Boston. Uh, thank you, Senator. Our next speaker is a colleague of our congressman and the House of Representatives and someone I've gotten to work with in the past couple of years. He's got a bunch of public housing in Boston in his district as well, and uh, a great guy who's uh, been a champion for working families and for public housing residents throughout the country. Warm welcome for Congressman Mike Capano. A long time ago, Steve said I was allowed to come to South Boston twice a year. <laughs> this is the second time. I won't be back until next year. So we're counting, Steve. Don't worry. I, no problems. Basically, I want to build on what Ed and Mike just said. I, I met Ann, I think, once, maybe twice. But I can't say I know her. But the truth is, I do know her. Because she reminds me of my mother. She reminds me of a lot of the mothers I know. And I, when I come to communities like South Boston, you know, I'm a sum of a guy. Same thing. Twos and three families houses. None of us can afford to buy houses there anymore. You know, I was looking for a condo along the water, but I'm out of luck. <laughs> Can't do it. And I think back and I say to myself, you know, Steve's story is very similar to my own and not uncommon. That, let's be honest. When I was growing up, and I won't speak for Steve, but I know it's true about a lot of us. The world we lived in expected a lot of us, but the world outside didn't. We were the throwaway children. We were the ones who were supposed to sit down, shut up, take it. And here's the level you can achieve, and that's it. And if we listened to the outside world, that's what we would have done. But some of us were fortunate enough to have parents who said, don't listen to that crap. You can do what you want to do, you can be who you want to be. If you listen to people who put you down, you're going to be put down. But if you stand up and say, no, nope, this is it, you can make a difference in the world. You can improve this world. You can help people just like us, the next level. And for me, that's what Steve Lynch is. He stepped up when people told him not to. He stood tall when people said, don't waste your time, can't be done. And he still does. And that tells me something about him, but it also tells me something about his family, to be perfectly honest. You don't, he's not the anomaly in his family. It can't be that way. People think I'm aggressive and I'm a little loud and a little pushy. You should meet my sisters. <laughs> And, that, and don't take that as an invitation to Thanksgiving. I got enough. <laughs> we're all a reflection of how we were raised, what was expected of us. And every one of us needed a helping hand at some point in our lives. Some of those helping hands are obvious, like public housing. Some of them are not, like the love and affection that you get from your family and your friends and the support you get from your community. How did it measure? But for me, that's why I wanted to come today. I wanted to share a moment to congratulate the Lich family, but also to remember their mother a little bit, who might you know, just a little, just a fraction. But also, for me, it's also an important way to celebrate who we all are, what we all are. We're all the same kids. We're all from the same types of neighborhoods. We all were raised the same way. And we all stood tall to say, we're not going to listen to the people who put us down. And for me, and I know for Steve, that's one of the reasons we do public service. I don't want anybody 
to ever hear those words either said or implied that you are the limited child of the next generation. I don't want anybody to do to the next children what was done to us or sometimes more obviously to our parents and grandparents. You, go sit down, go shut up, don't apply for those jobs, don't aspire to be better than this because we're not going to let you. That's what to me this is all about. This is celebrating a woman and her family that stood up and said, nope. We're allowed to be who we are. We're allowed to stand tall with our friends and neighbors. And I think that's why we're celebrating Ann Lynch today. Because that's who she was. And again, I don't pretend to have known her very well, but I know her. You all know her. And there's a little bit of her, hopefully, in each one of us. I'm proud to be here today to celebrate a few minutes with my friends, but I'm also proud to be a child of similar circumstances and someone who has never given up the fight and never will. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Congressman Capuano, and thank you, Senator Markey. Uh, I also want to uh, recognize uh, Boston Police Commissioner Billy Evans is with us today. Yeah. City Council Michael Flaherty is with us today. And now uh, we'll get somebody else any more else. Um, <laughs> One of, one, of the, one of the stories that I just want to share real quickly today was back in 2001. Uh, Stephen was running for the United States Congress. And we were um, doing a lot in the campaign. Uh, I have to say he worked hard, but all his sisters worked harder, so they're all here today. Uh, and we, w one Sunday, uh, I was down, I went over the house. Uh, Stephen's mom and dad would have Sunday dinner for anyone that kind of stopped in. It was just there. And I happened to stop in one day, and, and Mrs. Lynch pulled me into the kitchen, and she goes, Marty, I have to talk to you, dear. And she says, you know, how's my Stephen going to do in this race? Um, and, and, I, and I said, uh, I said we're going to win. And this is after a series of bad stories. And she goes, are you, sh are you sure? I said, we're absolutely going to win. And, 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 and you know, um, she was so concerned about not just Stephen, but her kids there, that it gave me great insight to who she was uh, as, as, as a person. Um, Stephen Lynch um, has that same spirit inside of him. Um, there's not many places in the country that you get people that grew up in housing development uh, that wear it as a badge of honor and are very proud to say where they're from. Uh, in this community in Southie, uh, you hear that. People, you know, w they might be living in Norwell in a, you know, beautiful little mansion, and they say, where are you from? From Old Colony. Uh, <laughs> and, and that, and, and that, that, coming with that pride of where they come from uh, is also a spirit. And that spirit that Ann Lynch had fighting for her kids and fighting for her family, uh, Stephen took that same spirit to the, United, the floor of the United States Congress. And if you, if you watch the issues that he works on, whether it's fighting for working people, working for postal workers, uh, ver working for TSA folks at the airport, uh, working for our veterans, uh, active service men and women overseas, um, he does that with a lot of pride. And when you start to think about him as, as, as an elected official, that pride comes from two things, where he's from and what he heard in his kitchen. And what he heard in his kitchen was you stick up for the person that needs the help. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the congressman from this district, Congressman Stephen Lynch. Hey. Thank you for that, that wonderful introduction, Mr. Mayor. I, I truly appreciate it. Uh, where do I begin? Uh, thank you for being here, and thank you for making this possible, Mr. Mayor, and, and Ed Markey, and, and uh, Mike Capuano. Uh, when I first went to Congress, I, I got elected on September 11th, the day of the attacks, 2001. And when I moved to Washington, uh, because of the attacks on the Pentagon right across the river, all the 
real estate brokers uh, were gone. I couldn't find a place to stay. And uh, Mike Capuano uh, opened up his home to me. He had a little apartment uh, and an aero bed, thank God. <laughs> and I explained to him, I said, look, Mike, as soon as they, they uh, you know, as soon as they open up again, I said, I'll, I'll get my own place. I said, uh, I'll be here a week. I was there four months. <laughs> Living. <laughs> he, he was afraid he couldn't get rid of me. And then one day I got my apartment, and uh, so I, I, I see him on the floor, and I said, here's, here's the keys. And, and uh, I gave, he was like, what? I said, I got my own apartment. I'm over, and I swear, he had like empty nester syndrome. <laughs> he had become attached to me. <laughs> but uh, I, have, I have great colleagues. It, this, is, this is Thanksgiving week, so uh, I want to especially thank Ed, Ed Markey and, and Mike, I know, and, and the mayor. I know everybody's got all kinds of stuff going on. Um, as well, I want to thank Bill McGonigal. Bill McGonigal has been unbelievable. As someone who has been an advocate for people in public housing, to have Bill McGonigal, who grew up here and, and, and understands across the city what the plight is of families growing up in, in public housing, it's just a, you are a blessing to us. And, uh, Just as he, he knows already, there's no learning curve with Bill McGonigal on matters of public housing. He's already been there. He knows it. Uh, he has the passion for it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've threatened to block his pension because I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> if, if he ever leaves, uh, I, I worry about that. But he has been uh, stellar, just superb. And uh, I thank the mayor in his wisdom for, for choosing Bill and uh, allowing to do that that great work for us. Uh, this has been a real partnership, all of this, uh, the, the reconfiguration, the rebuilding of, of uh, uh, the Ann Lynch homes at O'Colony. Uh, it's been a city, a state, and, a, and a, a, a federal, as well as a private sector uh, effort on behalf of us all. And uh, I know, I think everybody, every elected official, except for Mike Donovan down the back, has been recognized. So I want to recognize Mike Donovan. And uh, Howard Cohen is here from Beacon, uh, Beacon Communities. Where is Howard? You move. There he is, right in the back. A great partner on this. As well as uh, Mike Durain, who's the chairman of, uh, chairman of the board for Mass Housing in the back there. Thank you, Mike. And our own Tommy Lyons, who's his right hand man, is back there as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a, a joyful moment for, for myself and my family. Uh, I want to thank all, all my family. I know the whole clan is here today, uh, the, the old Harbor Lynches and the old Colony Lynches and, and, and so many, many more, and, and people who worked at the post office uh, with my mom here. It just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful moment. Uh, just want to say a little bit about my mom. Uh, so she, she was uh, one of eight kids. And uh, it was one of those long tail families, you know. Uh, so, so there were 19 years between her and her older sister, you know. So, so Kay Havlin, Kay Owens later, uh, was born in 1905, and my mother was born in 1924. Uh, she was a she was a child of the Depression, so she was five years old when the Great Depression hit, and uh, she was 15 years old when it ended. Tough, tough years. Uh, 1939, and that was the year she graduated from high school at 15 years of age. She got two, two double promotions. So she graduates from high school when she's 15, and nobody will hire her because she's 15. <laughs> and uh, they had, unfortunately for her, they had just signed, you know, just passed the Child Labor Act. Uh, so uh, she, she missed out on that. Uh, but uh, when World War II broke out two years later, at age 17, she went to work as a welder at uh, Clifford's Bellows. It's now called Cliflex. Cliflex, excuse me. It's still in business, uh, and they made uh, generators for and and, uh, and pumps for uh, military contractors. So she went to work as a welder, and uh, you know that was the that was that was her life. That was uh, you know what she had to deal with. So she had to deal with the Great Depression and and uh, you know go through the Second World War, and uh, you know it's it's it's. 
it was that it was a very special time in our nation in our, in our city. Uh, this the, the original old colony housing development was actually conceived as defense worker housing uh, because we had so many defense workers working at the the Navy Yard and the Army base, they had nowhere to put them. So they built this housing that was really built for defense workers. Uh, the, its greatest attribute was that it was bombproof. Uh, and uh, we, we learned that when we tried to knock the buildings down. <laughs> yeah, it, it, they brought me down for like the ribbon cutting where we were gonna knock the first building down. And, and they had the, the crane out there with the big, big, huge medicine ball, you know, hanging from the thing and they, they swing the thing in the crane and it hits the building and bunk. It, bounce, it bounces off. Nothing happened. And I, and I said, I, I said to you know Howard Cohen and Bill, I said, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> yeah, it was it was like, well, it was they built it uh, during the the Russian threat, you know, of, of nuclear war and things like that, and it was it was bombproof. So, uh, but it was not built with any of the accoutrements or amenities that you would hope for a development that was going to host children. And what happened was uh, when, when the war ended uh, and, and things kind of back to no got back to normal, defense workers moved back home, a lot of the local priests from St. Augustine's uh, came, went to the mayor at that time and said, you know, we got a lot of poor families here. And uh, you got these empty defense housing and we'd like to take it over and, and move families in. And that's, that's what happened. So, you know, my family, I had just been born in 1955. Uh, when we went on the waiting list for Old Colony. We were living at uh, uh, 19 Edison Green in Dorchester. That's where I was born. I can let it out now. <laughs> but uh, we went on, since I was a boy, I had two older sisters. Mom needed a, another bedroom, so uh, we ended up moving here at Old Colony, uh, 1262 Columbia Road. And uh, that's when we moved in. And, and my mother, to her day, always said how lucky, how lucky she was to move in here at O'Connor. They were on the waiting list. And uh, she said, oh my goodness, she said, when, uh, when we ever got that apartment, you know, it was just uh, a weight off her shoulders. They were, you know, it, it was tough back then, you know, and, uh, and it was a blessing to have a home and to have good neighbors. And she really, she said to me on many occasions, if we didn't have O'Connor, I don't know what we would have done. You know, that was, that was her whole view of things. And, and it would shape her uh, deep appreciation for public housing. Now, I know she had some famous battles with, uh, with uh, Mr. Murphy, the, the, old, uh, the old manager. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, I, think, I think the rent was 24 bucks a month. So I don't know what we were fighting about. But back then, you know, there's, there, there was an old story when she was a kid that uh, her, her father, John Thomas Havlin, moved the family from 3rd Street to K Street because his old landlord had gone up from, on the rent from $17 a month to $18 a month. <laughs> and he said he couldn't afford it, so uh, moved up to K Street. But, you know, uh, just Joe Murphy was, uh, yep. was, a, was, a, was a peach, was a great, great guy. But uh, always she... She, she considered Old Colony to be a blessing in her life. Uh, she, I remember uh, my mom was a big reader. She, she was brilliant. And if she had been born, uh, I always asked her about college. She said that wasn't the custom back then. She graduated high school when she was 15 years old with two double promotions. But she said, I didn't go to college because that wasn't the custom back then. And uh, Lord knows if she were, you know, graduating from high school today at age 15, there'd be They'd be beating her door down to give her scholarships and things like that, which is a, a, a real blessing uh, for young women today. But uh, back in the time when, when we lived here, uh, the moms had all the power. They did. And they still do. I, I just talked to a few of the, uh, the moms here on the way in, and uh, they, talk, they, they, uh, they are not shy. They are not shy. And they pretty much uh, tell me what they need, and it's my job to get it, myself and the mayor and, and uh, all the other elected officials here. But uh, it's good to see that that tradition is alive. I always remember growing up here that, uh, that it always seemed like I had 10 mothers, at least 10 <laughs> mothers. You know, they, they just, there, was, there was just an unwritten rule there 
that if any of the other mothers uh, caught you doing something that you shouldn't have been doing, it was just as bad <laughs> as if you, you were caught by your own mom. And there was that sort of, uh, I don't know, code of silence among the moms that they, <laughs> they just, uh, they just let this happen and they're good for you, you know, give them an extra one, you know, uh, <laughs> you know that type of thing. So uh, I know Debbie Hennessy's here today and her mom, Eileen, who lived downstairs from us. Uh, she's a state trooper now. And uh, Debbie is. <laughs> and her brother's a bishop, uh, Bishop Bob Hennessy. I, I spoke to him. He's given a mass up in Methuen, so he couldn't be with us. But her brother, Dan, Boston Police Department. Family just did, uh, and, and sister Bobby, who also uh, working for uh, uh, the federal government as well. God bless her. Um, but, uh, you know, just Mrs. Feeney, uh, you know, just all the all the moms, uh, the Joyce's, the Cahills, the Flaherty's, like Bill was saying, all those great ladies who who just uh, ruled ruled uh, the projects back then and and uh, and, and pro provide us with uh, uh, such such you know good upbringing. And I was great. It, it was it was it was great to see in the back there when we came in uh, Joe Agri Street. Yep. Uh, Joe Agri uh, was one of the older kids when I grew up, growing up, and he went to Vietnam, unfortunately, and uh, and was killed in service of our country. And uh, so, yep. Bill was kind enough, and 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 Howard and and the mayor were kind enough to name that street after him. And uh, so you you see what 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 tradition is is reestablished, even though we did the buildings over. And I'll I'll just tell you a quick story. You know, back in behind here is the old. Uh, Perkins, uh, uh, the J Michael J. Perkins or Mickey Perkins. Mickey Perkins was a uh, World War I uh, uh, hero from South Boston who uh, received the Congressional Medal of Honor uh, for his, his uh, heroism during World War I. And uh, there's a school there but, that I attended, the, the Perkins, when I was a kid. And, uh, we used to play stickball in that in that that yard there, and uh, the way it is in the projects, as it always has been, is that the younger kids, like me, like five, six years old, um, you had to wait till the older kids, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, to get done, and then you'd they'd let you win. It's sort of like the big fish hitting the little fish, <laughs> and and, uh, and woe and unto you if you ever stepped out of line. So I remember myself and Harry Cole and Billy Curley and a bunch of us waiting for the older kids to get done so we could play stickball. And they had this wrought iron fence. And so we're all up against the fence like this. Now, now Billy Curley, God bless him, uh, he was one of those kids who's, when he was born, he had the head of an adult. <laughs> he, he was actually like top heavy, you know, like, his whole, his whole childhood was just trying to keep his head balanced. So, so, He's a handsome kid now. His body caught up. Eventually. But but back then, so we're all watching we're all watching the older kids playing stickball, and we're watching forever. It's got to be at least 45 minutes. And all of a sudden, I don't know how it happened, but Billy Curly's head popped through popped through the the wrought iron fence, and he stuck. He stuck. He stuck. So and we're trying to help him. You know, first we thought it was a joke. Then we we can't get him out. Now he's trying. And the back of his the back of his ears are getting really red. So we we call over the we call over the older kids. Bad mistake. <laughs> so they're kicking him in the pants. Now he's really crying. Now some adults come over. We're trying to get him out. We can't do it. I run down. Bobby Petrosky's dad is the cop at Bell's Market. We bring him back in. Figuring, you know, he'll he'll know what to do. So he looks over. He looks at Bill, Billy's crying, and, and back of his head is all red and raw, and uh, everything gets quiet. And Officer Petrosky looks at him. He says, uh, "Well, okay, only one thing we can do. We'll have to cut his head off." <laughs> I swear to God. I swear. Think a police officer, I mean, Evans. Where was community policing back then? But uh. A a anyway, anyway, they actually had the, the janitor come out and they spread the bars a little and pop them out. Funny, I told that story at the Perkins School to the kids, but I didn't, I didn't put in at the end that they had spread the bars and, and, and the kids are coming up to me at the end that they cut his head off. <laughs> it was awful. But, uh, but, but anyway, so you have 
Mickey Perkins School and now Joe Agri Street, and, and so that tradition of uh, respecting our veterans and, and uh, uh, our military uh, continues. Um, but again, my mom never forgot what a blessing Old Colony was to her. She always had a, a soft spot in Old Colony. And uh, when I was in law school, they had this thing where they require you to work 20 hours a week uh, as, as a new outcoming attorney on on causes that are uh, pro bono, for free. Uh, but it has to be for people who can't afford a lawyer otherwise. So my mom said, you know, you ought to go back to Old Colony and represent some of those families, you know. You grew up there, so when your mother suggests something like that, you do it. And uh, so I came down here, and uh, I think Sandy Enriquez was the, uh, the manager back there, the uh, director. And uh, I started representing families that had asbestos on their pipes because we didn't know anything about asbestos when they first built this place. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was uh, covered with asbestos, some of the piping. Uh, lead paint, I represented families on lead paint. I represented families that had, you know, a mom and dad and five kids and, you know, two bedrooms. Uh, under house, they call that. Um, so I did a lot of cases down here as a, as a practicing, as a new attorney and uh, loved every minute of it, you know, just uh, reconnected with a lot of families here. And then uh, when I did become a, a member of Congress, I, I was lucky enough to end up on the housing committee, housing subcommittee with Mike Capuano. And, uh, you know, when my mother for the swearing in came down and, and found out that I had been assigned to the housing committee, she said, you know, it wouldn't be a bad thing if you got some money to fix that place up. <laughs> <laughs> and so with, with my friend Ed Markey, and, uh, and, and Mike Capuano, uh, we were able to do that. First I said to her, Ma, it's gonna take a couple of hundred million to do that. She was right. <laughs> and so, uh, so slowly and deliberately, uh, we've been able to, again, when your mother suggests something, you might have, you know, you just, especially an old colony mom, you basically do it. And uh, so we've been with, with great help. And, and I wanna mention Maya Menino, uh, because he, 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 was, he was all in, too. Uh, when I asked him if we could fix up the Oconee housing project, he had one request. He said, yes, but can we do Mission Maine first? He said, because that place is even in worse shape. Yeah. And so I said, if, if we can make a deal, I said, as long as we do both, I said, we can wait a year until Mission Maine is squared away, and then, and then we'll do, we'll do Oconee. And he said, it's a deal. And, and we shook on that. And then, uh, of course, when, when Marty Walsh became mayor, he accelerated the whole process. And uh, he's done a marvelous, marvelous job in linking. Marty has done something that no other mayor has been able to do as, as well. And that is, he's really captured the success downtown and redirected it to the neighborhoods. In closing, let me, let me just say this. If, if my mom were here, should, should say two things. Uh, first of all, should say thank you for allowing my name to be associated with the old colony housing development because she loved it and uh, this was really her, her roots and an important part in her, her life and, and with, her, with her new family, you know, raising kids here and having them born here, uh, number one. And, and, and secondly, um, I think she would say that she hoped that, that by naming this after a, an old colony mom who raised her kids here, I think she would, she would be most happy if she believed that somehow having this named after her gave honor to all those moms who raised their kids here and who who struggled at times to raise their kids here. And maybe they had a husband trying to help them, and maybe they didn't. But uh, I think my mom, my mom would be very happy if she thought that we were also honoring all the other moms that, that raised their kids here. You know, I still work for the families of all colony, which is a good thing. And uh, we've got a little bit more work to do. Right, Howard?
Yeah, we, we do. Right. We've got, uh, I think, two more phases to do here before we, we, um, we, can, we can say we're done. But uh, thank you to for all of you for being here. Thank you for your kindness to my family and the recognition of my mom. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't uh, escape me that across the way is the Mary Lee Ellen McCormick Housing Development, where Congressman uh, John W. McCormick had that named after his mom. So uh, maybe Ann Lynch and, uh, and uh, Mary Ellen McCormick are looking down today and, uh, and smiling about this, this nice arrangement. Thank you. Uh, well said, Congressman. Perhaps the ultimate South Boston compliment is he never forgot where he came from. Stephen Lynch never forgot where he came from. And Congressman Capuano, you should meet my sisters too, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen knows one of them. He went to high school with her, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I would also like to, uh, uh, Congressman Lynch mentioned, but please, a round of applause for former Mayor Ambassador Ray Flynn. <laughs> And I'd also uh, like to recognize uh, the Secretary's representative for New England uh, for HUD, uh, Jim Reed. Jim, thanks for coming. And the program would not be complete if we did not have uh, one of uh, the Old Colony moms, uh, current day Old Colony moms, uh, say a few words, uh, the president of the uh, or call a tenant organization, someone who works very hard day in and day out uh, advocating for uh, the families, the moms, the kids uh, from Old Colony. Uh, she also serves as a member of the BHA's Resident Advisory Board, and she's a dear friend. Please, a warm welcome for Phyllis Corbett. Phyllis? Good afternoon. It's an honor to follow, you, follow all you important people here. You're important. <laughs> um, I've lived in here for over 40 years. I've seen quite a few changes. The biggest was the renovations, and we've made it through phase one and phase two. I'm sure that we'll make it through the rest of the phases. The renovation's been good for us. The name change will be better. We should all take notice that Ann raised a congressman here. Maybe we can follow in her footsteps and do the same. Change is good. Let's celebrate the name change. Let's keep unity in the community. And as long as I'm still living here, nobody's going to get away with anything. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not even going to try to get away with it. <laughs> not with Phyllis looking over my shoulder, that's for sure. Uh, our next speaker, as uh, Congressman uh, Lynch men mentioned, has uh, been our partner uh, here at Old Colony uh, in uh, uh, our renovations. And uh, we were talking about a little earlier today about the fact we're certainly in a position now to jumpstart phase three and hoping we can get a groundbreaking for phase three sometime soon. Please a warm welcome for I think Chairman of Beacon Communities, Mr. Howie Cohen. It's a real honor for me to be here today with Senator Market as an old friend, Congressman Capuano, Congressman Lynch, I'm um, in the mayor. I um, want to thank everybody and all the other elected officials for allowing us to redevelop Old Colony into the end Lynch homes. Um, the quality of the development. Um, is really remarkable. It's something I can say because I didn't have much to do with it. Um, it's really the quality of the construction. We have great contractors uh, working here, great union workers uh, supporting uh, this, and we have a fabulous on-site staff um, who uh, I think sort of epitomize the moms um, of, of, uh, of, of the Lynch era in terms of um, maintaining development. And we're actually in a very special place in the Tierney Learning Center. This is not just a community center. This is really a learning center of the with the ideas in mind that, that the prior speakers talked about, 300 kids a week come here to do their homework, to learn, to get tutored. 
Um, and it's a very special opportunity for them to have some place. The congressman was saying that when he was here, his mom um, got a library yep. in the basement um, of one of the developments. And uh, we've come a long way here now um, with, with the Tierney Center. We're very proud to have partnered with the Boston Housing Authority um, and with um, Mike Durain and Tim Sullivan for Mass Housing. These are both places I actually worked in my part of my career. Um, and these types of developments don't happen without the cooperation between the public and the private sector. Um, so it's our honor, really, to have this opportunity uh, to name this development um, after Congressman Lynch's mom. Um, my mom's from a different ethnic background, a different town, but I got the concept. <laughs> I, I, I understood, understood what was going on. Um, so it's our pleasure to, to have this, our honor, and we thank you all for your support and hope that you'll come back for the groundbreaking for phase three, which uh, the mayor has been uh, quite supportive of, and we'll get it into construction as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Howard. Uh, we're going to close out with a prayer, but before we do that, uh, Jack Hart. oh, is, yeah, Jack, Jack where, is Jack here? Where's Jack? Jack Hart, former Senator Jack Hart. Where is he? Where are you, Jack? Uh, we're, uh, the Reverend Joseph O'Keefe is uh, going to do a closing prayer, but uh, before we do that, I'd like to tell a quick story about uh, Bishop Hennessy, if I could, uh, Stephen's uh, neighbor and friend. Uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I got a call from uh, uh, an old friend of mine, dear friend of many of the folks here, uh, Senate President Bob Travellini. And he asked me if I could go by to see Father Hennessy at Holy Redeemer Church out in Eastie. And at the time, we were uh, doing the planning for the Hope Six redevelopment of the Maverick housing development over there in East Boston. And I said to the Senator, by all means, certainly. So I go over to the, uh, to the rectory and I meet uh, Father Hennessy and soon I find out he's a Southie guy and not only a Southie guy but a project guy and that his nephews and my sons played hockey together so we had this great rapport but it was a really interesting, his concern was he said I don't want any buildings across from the church that will block the sun that will interfere with the beautiful stained glass windows at Holy Redeemer Church. So if you go out there today, you will see a park in an open space <laughs> next to the Holy Redeemer Church. All right? I think, uh, Father, we, we're not big believers in separation of church and state in Boston. So with that, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, uh, Reverend Joseph O'Keefe for the closing prayer. Thank you. Let, our, let us place ourselves in the presence of God as we understand God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Dear God, just a few uh, short months ago, you took someone from us who was beloved to us, Anne Lynch, to yourself. And in the words that many a Southie father gave a future son-in-law, you better be taking good care of her. <laughs> We know she's taking good care of us. We ask you to bless the Ann and Lynch homes at Old Colony, bless the families and people that live here, make them safe, safe homes, make them happy homes, make them homes that are full of hope and joy. We ask you to bless all those present, all those who work to make these homes possible in one way or another, and we ask you to bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. All right, at this point, uh, we're going to uh, ask the elected officials and certainly the family. We're going to go uh, unveil a sign. There are three uh, Ann M. Lynch signs up today, two more to come next week, and we're actually going to sprinkle them around throughout the development. But uh, this uh, is the one closest to us, so this is the one we're going to do the formal unveiling for. So please join us. Oh,